Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, as part of the Army Painting Horus Heresy series, we're going to cover everybody's favourite baddies, the Word Bearers. Now I'm going to go for that traditional candy scheme or metallic red scheme that we used to see back way back in book, gosh, what was it, five? Um, when we got them from Forge World. Um, it's a scheme I really like. And it offers a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to army painting in that it's relatively quick and simple to do, which is what we want, but it looks fantastic on the table. So let's paint. First up, we're going to address the black areas of the armor. So over a Chaos Black Primer, I've just base coated the model using Vallejo Model Color Black through my airbrush. You could do it with a brush, doesn't matter. Just gives us a nice matte black to work from. And then for our first highlight, I'm using quite a dark turquoise color. In this case, Games Workshop Incubi Darkness. I've thinned this about two drops of thinner to paint, so normal airbrush thinner. And it's taking me, I don't know, three or four layers to just build up the highlight. And we're going for the shoulder pads and the knee pads. And just a nice simple light source from above. Now you can see there, I've built that turquoise up. And then for one final highlight, I've added in a little bit of off-white. In this case, I used Vallejo model color, pale blue gray. Mix that into the airbrush pot that I already have my turquoise in. And I've added a few more drops of thinner. So this is probably nearer three drops of thinner to the paint mix. And you can see this highlight a little bit clearer. The key when we're highlighting black is just to leave plenty of that black there so that it doesn't end up looking like a turquoise. Now you could choose to leave those parts off the model and paint them separately if you want. But I find a lot of the time I prefer painting models in as few sub-assemblies as possible. It makes it easier to match up the highlights and I think it's just quicker on the whole when you're army painting. So I thought in this video that's how I'd do it. And the way to get around the fact that I want to airbrush more of this model is I'm going to use liquid mask to mask off those areas that we've painted black. Now I'm using a Humbra one here but they're all the same thing, they're like a liquid latex and I've found the easiest way to apply them is using a cocktail stick. I tried using synthetic brushes, but they gunk up so quickly. You use um, isopropyl to clean them, but it was just a pain and, and the toothpick or the cocktail stick, it's just really easy. I put a big blob on and then I use the tip to sort of manipulate it around. And because it's very viscous, it's you've got a little bit of control with it. Now, once the mask is dry, it will go basically transparent like this. At this point, we can just carry on painting. Now for a candy scheme, which is where we have a, a metallic, it's slightly different to a metallic scheme, but basically we have a, a clear coat over the top of a silver uh, or a gold or a bronze for that matter, but <laughs> generally it's silver. Um, and it's a simple two-tone pre-shade. So I'm gonna use a dark silver, in this case Vallejo Metal Color Series Steel. So just getting a nice base coat of that over the model. Metal color series are particularly nice in the airbrush, uh, which is why I'm using it for this. And then for the highlight, we're gonna use a bright steel. In this case, I'm gonna use model uh, Vallejo Model Air Steel. So the same name, but just go with numbers when it comes to Vallejo. And to be honest with you, in this example, just use a dark silver and a light silver. It really doesn't matter. You know, whatever you like using, just get it on there. And this is to act like a black and a white and a gray uh, when we do a traditional pre-shade. So we're going to hit the areas that we think the light's going to bounce uh, and, and highlight. And we're going to use to, the lighter silver to represent that. Still leaving that nice dark silver in the shadows to give us a little bit of contrast across that colour. Now, an additional step you can do if you like uh, is to add your edge highlights at this stage. It's very tricky with a candy scheme to add your ed edge highlights later. It can be done, it's just a lot more processes. Uh, and I found, especially for army painting, it's a lot more efficient if you want them to do them at this stage. Uh, typically, I would just maybe do it on the helmet, you know, ar around the neck of the model where the, the focal point is. And then things like his fist, you know, you've got those nice segmented fingers. Um, I think it makes sense to do a little bit on there. It's very much personal taste. Now the first coat we're going to put on uh, is Karaberg Crimson. So this is actually a wash by Games Workshop. Uh, but it's a nice crimson colour uh, and it's very translucent because it is a wash. It's not a candy paint, um, so it hasn't got that depth and that shine to it. What we really want here is the colour. 
Now I've sped this up uh, four times, so it took me four minutes to lay this down on the model. And you can see that's because I'm working my way around the model, building it up nice and slowly. I haven't thinned this at all, I've just tipped it straight into my uh, airbrush cup. And it's still 25 PSI, still the same coat of paint uh, evolution. And I'm spraying this into the shadow areas. I'm not worrying if I get a little bit of overspray onto the highlights, but this is really to give those shadows that crimson colour. Now once that's on, we're going to go in with a proper clear paint. So this is Tamiya Clear Red. Different companies do different clear paints. Um, they're all decent, um, but Tamiya Clear Red sort of the original. Um, it's a lot of fun. It smells amazing, uh, even with your mask on. So I've thinned this hmm, probably five drops of thinner to paint. So it's a nice dilute mix. And really, as I'm moving around the model, I don't want to see much of a change in color until I've got maybe two layers on. And then the key is to let it dry between layers. So I use the air from my airbrush as I'm going. And then as soon as it starts looking like it might be the color I want, I'll stop, I'll get my hair dryer out, I'll let it sit for a minute because it does darken down as it dries. And it's important if you're going to be army painting that you note down the dilution that you use for this and you note down how many layers that you put on. That way you'll get a nice consistent colour across your army, even if you add units in at a later date. And I'm spraying all over the model here. I'm not worried about hitting the shadows because I know it's a translucent layer of paint so the shadow colour will show through. So I think I did maybe two more layers after the end of that clip, and here's where we got to. Now it's looking a little bit Blood Angel uh, for my taste at the minute. So I'm going back in with the Caraberg Crimson. This time I have thinned it, so it's a 50-50 mix with airbrush thinner, so it's a real sort of thin glaze consistency now. I'm just gonna give the whole model one coat, let it dry, see how it's tinted it, and then depending on uh, if I like it, I'll give it another coat. You can see once that's dried, it's quite drastically changed the colour. Obviously it's changed the finish slightly. The wash does not have as glossy finish as the clear. Um, but the most important thing is now we have a real crimson colour. Rather than that, uh, as I said, rather blood angel looking red we had. So once you're happy with the metallics, we can remove the mask from the black parts. Um, easiest way I've found to do this is with sticky blue tack. Um, this is a really manky old piece and it's not doing a very good job. Um, but yeah, plenty of the patrons gave me a tip about using blue tack to remove it. There's no risk of uh, damaging the paintwork underneath them. And if it's sticky enough, you can just get any of the little bits of residue on. Easy peasy. Now we want to prep the model uh, for the next couple of stages, which is the decal application and some pin washing. So I'm just using a gloss varnish here. I've thinned it maybe two drops of thinner to varnish, just normal airbrush thinner. And I'm giving the model at least three coats, but probably three to five coats, something like that. A really nice glossy finish. Because they're thin layers, I'm not worried about masking any detail. Now to pin wash, I'm going to use uh, a dark, very dark grey colour. This is Smoke by Absalom 502. And I'm going to mix that with an odourless mineral spirit. Uh, in this case, it's Winsor & Newton Sansador. We just mix this up into a wash consistency. Uh, and I'll link up to a video talking all about pin washing and all the different products you can use uh, and try out. And then one of my favourite steps, we just work our way around the model using capillary action to draw that dark colour into all the recesses and give us a nice bit of definition and contrast. So I wanted to take a minute just to say thank you to everyone who subscribes over on here on YouTube, but particularly those of you that support us over on Patreon. Um, it allows us to produce sort of two videos a week between the two platforms, um, some on army painting, some on display level painting, some of our own projects. Um, you know, if you're liking Heresy at the moment, uh, Andy's just finished this great World Eaters Dread over on there. Um, so we really tried to mix it up, but we're only able to produce that quantity of videos um, because of your guys' support. Uh, and it's also meant that we've been able to bring in more people to produce different tutorials for you. So obviously we've got Baz doing his sculpting. Uh, we've got a few guests lined up as well. Um, so just try and bring as many cool tutorials uh, and, and great sort of miniatures painting videos as we possibly can. As I say, it's all down to you guys and we're incredibly grateful for all of that support. 
and I could watch pin washing forever. Right, I've popped the decals on and I've left the model overnight. Again, I'll link up in the uh, corner there a video all about applying your transfers and getting a, a nice finish with them. Now, once everything's dry, we want to unify the finish across the model because obviously we've got a very glossy bits. So we've got the black is a slightly different finish. It's very glossy where the transfers have been. So we'll give the whole model a satin varnish. I've chosen satin here because if I'm doing a metallic scheme or a candy scheme, if I was to use a, a matte varnish or an ultra matte varnish like I often do, it really kills all of that lovely shine and depth that you get from using those paints. So once that's dry, I then black out all the other details on the model and it's time to address the trim. Now for the silver trim for these guys, I've gone for more of a blue silver because I think it contrasts nicely with the red uh, and I'm using scale 75 black metal. The scale 75 metal paints are very nice uh, and you'll see us use them across most of our projects. Um, they just brush on very smoothly and they airbrush nicely. So they're a good one to have in your, uh, in your arsenal. And then for a little highlight on that silver, I'm going to use Games Workshop Grey Knight Steel. And this is a bright, slightly blue silver. So nothing too complicated, but just picking out those areas where that light source is hitting. And it's almost as if he's sort of pointing at where that light source is coming from. Now another part on the model, probably the last part really that, that's different to the other areas, is the leather is it terages, terges, something like that, PTE and a bunch of other letters, all the little leather strap bits. Um, for this, I'm going to use a nice dark brown color. I think it's got a little bit of purple in it as well, which is nice. Uh, this is German camo black brown. Um, doesn't really matter. Just pick a brown leather uh, color that you like. I'm going to base coat all the straps with that. You see it's quite a thin mix, probably 50-50 on my wet palette. And then I'm going to mix in a lighter brown. In this case, I've chosen Gobi Brown by Scale 75. And it's about a 50-50 mix with the camo there, just for a first highlight. And then I'm going to go in with the pure Gobi Brown and just do lots of little taps and scratches all along the edges of the leather. Now, it's only three stages. It does take a little while because you want to be accurate with it. But particularly when we've got a model like this with that candy finish on the armor, the contrast that we get from having that nice matte finish on the leather is fantastic. It really helps define those parts, um, particularly at a distance. Now, when it comes to weathering um, candy coats or, or you know clears like this, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, there's just basically not as much um, wiggle room for us to, to play around with different uh, paints and stuff. But if we just jump straight to a nice bright silver, I think I've used lead belcher here, um, it, it, it's fantastic. You, you can get that weathered chipped scratch look very very easily um, and again with army painting we're, we're we're looking to sell effects you know when people glance at this miniature we want them to think oh he's you know he's battered and, and, and war torn he's in the middle of the thing we're not worrying so much about showing off 14 different layers of weathering and stuff um, you know as awesome as that is um, this is about getting it done uh, to the best of our ability and getting it on the table and the last stage is just a nice dark brown oil wash. So I've made this wash up the same way as when we pin washed him. Um, this particular color is shadow brown by Abtalon, but you could use like burnt umber, which is just a dark brown, work fine. And I'm focusing predominantly on all of the metal parts of the model, um, which incidentally, I did the other silver parts of the model with Iron Warriors just to make it look like a different silver to the trim. Um, slopping that all over, pull in a few streaks, and once he's based up, he's done. So these come together ever so quickly, these army painting videos. And really, I think you could break this one down into the armor, uh, the leather, and then maybe the trim. Um, but you could rattle out an army, which I think will look fantastic on the tabletop, nice and quickly uh, using this scheme. Uh, I've obviously used a bear head on this miniature, or helmet, let's head. Um, if I was using a helmet, I'd probably go for green on my lenses. Uh, and I think something like Games Workshop Cabalite Green, so do Incubi Base, Cabalite Green, a little white in there for the highlight, um, I think would look and work really well uh, with these, uh, the bad guys that they are. Uh, they don't always need red lenses, bad guys. Um, it does help, but yeah, we'll see. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about anything I've used or the scheme itself, please feel free to pop them down in the comments and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're not already because it really helps us out. And I'll see you next time.